is no better way to open your Thursday than with the best youth show in the motherland. It, of course, is XM, man. The girl, Mitty Hara, and, of course, the princess are presenting is here to keep you entertained for the hour from 5 till 6 p.m. And today, man, we're talking about the month of love, of course. And if you at home and you're trying to find yourself some love, we have it right here in the studio talking to us a bit more about, you know, flirting or entitlement. We have Zia and Ruth, who are both HR students. And if you would like to find out more about the conversation, do stay tuned, sit back, relax. We got you covered. So welcome to the show, Zia and Ruth. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, you know. And we, of course, as I've just mentioned, it is the month of love. So we're talking about, you know, entitlement versus um, flirting. So with the week, of course, if you want to know, to know more about what it is, of course, the week of, well, International Flirting Week, it ranges from the 12th to the 18th of February, which is why we are focusing on it today. So the person at home that wants to know a bit more about what the difference is between the two, what would you say the difference is? The difference for me would be maybe that men have this thing where you have a nice car, you have money, you have fancy clothes mm. now. They feel like if you don't say or you don't, if you don't say yes to them, they feel so like, okay, they can't, it's like they, it's eating on their ego in a sense. Mm -hmm. So it's like for men, it's just really difficult for them to take no for answer because I feel like why can't a guy just come up to a girl, have a normal conversation instead of putting out that they are rich, they have money, they can give you a good life, mm -hmm. you know? And what about you? I think flirting is more, um, like it's like, it's, soft and then entitlement always attacked. there's an aggression behind it mm -hmm. there's more of a a harmful intention behind it whereas flirting is more like let me take you on a date whereas entitlement is like i'm going to take you on a date to do what i want mm -hmm. i think it's more there so people tend to downplay you know the sense of entitlement rather than having the flirting how would you say that if someone is going through something right now that someone is well, the sense of entitlement is coming across to them how could they approach someone in saying no rather than have them take ownership of what's happening in the current relationship or the dynamic that they have at the moment? I think you have to be in front of it. You have to, the second any, I think uh, more often than not, people will like overlook the first red flag, the first one, the second one, third one, they'll wait for a bigger thing to happen before they actually act on something. Mm. But I think the first, the second that first sign comes through, knock it like just there, like, lay your boundary let them know what you're going to accept and what you're not mm. and let it be made straightforward look if this is not the way you're going to you can conduct yourself when you're with me then there's no reason for us to interact with each mm -hmm. other definitely and I, I am agreeing with what you are saying right now but to the person that's at home right mm -hmm. now and i know i speak for myself as well you know we think as women we go through this this time where it is it has become so difficult for us to just say no mm. you know and for people to actually just take us on our word that we are saying no we we don't want to go through this we don't want to give you our number we don't want to go on a date we're not trying to entertain you right now if the aggressor or the person that is approaching you is not accepting your answer in that time what would you say is the safest way to go about it i feel like i would speak to somebody about it because at the end of the day if you say no it could lead to something mm -hmm. worse and you never know, the world is crazy. People do the weirdest and wildest things. So I would say that go to someone and speak about it and let them know what's happening and who this person is so that you can both come to a sort of an agreement of how to solve this problem with the mm -hmm. person. What about you? I think there's no real safe way. It's all about looking at the situation and you have to kind of see what type of person they are. You have to read it before you act on it because what might work in one situation might not work in another. Yes, for someone, for one person, you can easily just say no and they'll be like, okay, I'll back off. Mm -hmm. Whereas someone else, you say no and they automatically take that as a, I'm gonna go for it more, I'm gonna go for it more. Mm -hmm. So like, yes, like you have to, you have to bring someone else into the situation if you know you can't handle it alone. And in the society that we are living in today, I know that things have become, it has moved so quickly and it's been moving so fast in terms of GBV and the things that we face, not only as women, but as men as well. Do you, when you ladies are out, would you say that there is a certain type of fear that you are facing, you know, being approached by a guy or any person at all, Ruth? I, I don't know how to explain it, but I'm not a, a soft person. Like, I set men straight. Mm. Like, if I don't want to speak to you, I don't want to speak to you. Like, I'll put you on your place. So mm. I can't say when I go out, I get that kind of feeling where I'm scared 
or anything because I'm my father's daughter. I will put you in your place. I'm not scared. So no, I don't think I have any fear of it. Mm -hmm. And I know I've, I've spoken to a few friends last week and we were speaking about the something that happened, you know, um, where women get to this point where we are approached with our numbers and people asking, can I get your number, you know, and it, it becomes so uncomfortable that mm -hmm. you end up giving them your number because you're f fearful of what yeah. might happen at the mm -hmm. end. And in that moment, they will just call you to make sure that it is your number. So have you personally, Zia, ever been faced with that? Yes, oh, a lot. Like oh, when we go out on the weekends and stuff like that, that is something that happens regularly. And like, I understand that's the culture, that's, mm. how, that's how we work, you know. But um, what I sometimes do is like, I will give my daddy's number. Like, you can find my daddy, you can speak to him. If you are interested in anything with me, that's the first person you can speak to. If trying to get through to me, like, call my father. Speak to him, he will deal with everything. So, but I, it is a scary thing also in a sense, Definitely. because especially when they do that and they like want to check if it's the right number mm. and stuff, because then it's like, why are you so persistent? Like, why, why do you It really does become my, persistent. And in know? that moment, is it certainly is very, very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But I know the conversation can continue. Thank you so much to Zia and to Ruth. If you also would like to tell us what your comment is on the conversation, of course, we are Excel Live across all social media platforms. But right now, man, we're taking a quick breather for you and yours. Yeah, I have. I have. Sometimes you feel uncomfortable talking to a person and I feel like if you make that evident and they continue, it's kind of entitlement. Yeah. I feel that I like to express my boundaries and I make that clear off the bat. So, um, I wouldn't say I haven't, but when I do feel harassed, I'm able to like express that. Um, yeah, I have actually. Usually in a setting of like when we're out and about with friends and a cocky guy comes over and tries his like, yeah. Well, I, I'm from um, the US and that concept of entitlement doesn't really exist. I was just kind of talking with everyone else in the newsroom um, about that idea. Um, I don't know, it's an interesting one, but I think it might be a bit more antiquated. I don't really think either partner in any kind of situation is really entitled to anything. Um, I just think as long as it's you know respectful and you're communicating clearly, um, I don't really think either person should feel like they're owed something from, their, from the other. Yes, I think you go through that every day. I could just be taking a walk and you find a random stranger, I just feel entitled to it's either touch me, you can like ask, bruh, so I think more puff everywhere, yeah, like walking or in a club, so I've been in a scenario like that. Um, I, will, I have been. Um, I just feel at this generation, we have all been in that situation, whether it's uh, a slippery DM or whatever, then you start pro to flirt, then yeah, then you see yourself in an entitlement slash clingy situation. Not that I can remember or, you know, yeah, no, I don't, I don't know. I know my queen wanted to go to an ad real bad because she needed a breather, but we still need to hear what you guys were saying in the streets. And it's actually so funny because one person is saying, hey, I don't know what that is because I'm from the U.S., but I feel like entitlement exists pretty much anywhere, but that is just my thing. Remember, ladies and gents, on the show, we always have a social media question for the day, and today is, what is the best way to approach flirting? So are you a DM type of person? Are you a let me send her flowers and see if she likes me back type of person? Or are you a let me hit you up in the streets, like let's see where this is going type of person? I don't know what person I am. I haven't been in the streets so long. 
but I, I love anything that has to do with love as well as relationships. But right now, though, we do believe that you do deserve rather a quick ad break, and we'll see you after this.